Frutters and Sorors, the Vice President of the Supreme Council of Amork, Frater Cecil A. Poole. The concept of an object or idea being sacred is one so vague in the minds of most individuals that to define the word sacred becomes involved and many times confusing. Individuals have usually considered the concept of being sacred as something removed from their own reasoning and have therefore accepted primarily the decisions or directions of someone else as to what is or is not sacred. Like so many words which are used without analysis by persons who use them, it is sometimes worthwhile to analyze the concept in order that we may determine to our own satisfaction that which should be considered sacred and exactly what the concept implies. It might be well in considering the state or subject of sacredness, whether or not an object or idea has to be associated with a religious thought or implication in order to qualify for a state or concept of being sacred. I believe the average individual immediately associates the word sacred with a religious function, institution, or place. The word has been used so much in its religious connotation that it is very difficult for many people to conceive that religion actually does not have complete monopoly over the concept of that which is or is not sacred. Many persons who have been trained since childhood in a religious concept accept without question the idea that certain tangible objects and certain ideas are sacred and are beyond doubt, beyond the ability of any individual to modify. The definition of the word sacred implies in many ways the concept that I have just outlined. That is, sacred has to do with a religious concept, idea, or object. One of the definitions given by a standard dictionary of the English language makes the word holy synonymous with sacred and refers to anything that is sacred as being hallowed by association with a divine concept and therefore entitled to reverence and respect. It is not my purpose here to detract from the sacred concept as may be upheld or expounded by religion but actually I believe that the concept of sacredness is more profound than that which may be limited only to one field, even though that field is religion. There are many concepts in regard to the state of sacredness. In reference to definitions again, another definition of sacred is merely that which is dedicated, that which is set apart in honor of someone or something, and therefore devoted exclusively to a person or a certain end. In this concept, or from this point of view, the meaning of the word sacred is immediately broadened, and we find that sacred can apply to objects and ideas which lie beyond the limitations of religious dogma or theological points of view. There are also many false concepts, the primary one being that sacredness is a state in itself. This concept has developed among many people and not necessarily people of limited training or background. In our modern civilization, there are those who believe that that which is sacred or is believed to be sacred, or rather accepted by a certain majority as being sacred, is something that is absolutely untouchable and cannot be explored, examined, or submitted to critical analysis. It is actually believed by some people that to subject anything to examination that is considered sacred is an unholy act in itself, in fact an act of disrespect for those who might hold the object or idea as sacred. If the concept of sacred is such that it cannot be submitted to examination by intelligent and sincere individuals, then it would be best that the sacred concept be banished entirely. Any concept that is conceived by the human mind is subject to analysis and even criticism by the human mind. I presume there are those who believe that anything that is sacred is not conceived in the first place by the human mind, but rather is of divine origin. Actually, we have no substantiation of such a concept because man himself has established his ideas that he considers to be sacred 
and also has selected those objects that are so considered. The point that I am most interested in at this time is to present for your consideration the idea that the condition of being sacred is not inherent in anything. That is, it is only the value assigned by an individual or by human beings as a group that bring about the state of sacredness. This, of course, leads us to a consideration of the objective and subjective aspects of trying to arrive at a definition or a realization of what the term really means. Actually, many of the concepts that I have referred to here have been objective. That is, when man considers a certain book, a certain statue, or any other physical object as sacred, he is exercising the tendency of projecting from his own thinking the idea of someone else as a reflection, in a sense, and associating that thought with the object, and presuming that the state of sacredness is within the object itself. Those who believe it is unwise, or at least ill-advised, to criticize a holy book such as the Bible, have the feeling or have developed the idea that the book and its contents is sacred because of the intrinsic value of the book and its writings regardless of their source or who wrote them. Modern criticism of literature has caused us to be somewhat more realistic. We know that any holy book is the result or record of the experiences, reflections, or meditations of other human beings. It is true that many of the individuals may have been more involved than we are, but it is also true that many of them may not have been evolved even as much as you or I. Therefore, such a book is subject to the same errors that are the writings of any human being, and if the thoughts expressed cannot be faced with pure reason, their value definitely is not as great as may be presumed. Writing and the ideas expressed in writing do not have to be perfect in order to have value. In many cases, the imperfections themselves lend value because they point out the frailties of human existence and the inevitability of human error. To turn to a book considered sacred is to share in the experiences and the inspiration of those who have had the ideas that have made possible the recording of the chapters and verses of such a book. If we look upon those concepts or those writings and the ideals expressed as being beyond the limitation of our mind to analyze, then we are depriving ourselves of the ability to share in the same experiences and therefore to face the same facts and same ideas that were recorded for our direction. The objective concept of sacredness then is to project, or I might better say again, to reflect the ideas of someone else into another object or idea. Actually, the true concept of sacredness is a subjective concept. Sacredness, or the concept of being sacred, begins within ourselves. This is well expressed by our own ritual of our temple convocation. When the Master reads, we come to this sacred temple, made sacred by our thoughts and conduct. It is, therefore, within the mind of man, and in the expression of man, in other words, in his mental contact, his behavior, that he himself made sacred those things which are external representations to him of ideals and purposes which he holds of great value. The temple of the Rosicrucian order, for example, its rituals and all phases of its function, as they are exemplified either in writing or by physical objects, become sacred in direct proportion to your finding value in them and, in a sense, projecting the values and benefits which you yourself gleam from these associations into the objects which serve as external symbols of the experiences that have been a part of your own consciousness, your own development, and, in a sense, your own life. Sacredness, then, begins within. Its expression on the outside is secondary to the intent and idealism that underlies that which we find manifest in the world outside of us. We therefore believe that that which is sacred is that which is not to be profaned by actions inconsistent with the ideals which we hold. When we project, as it were, our ideals into objects and concepts, we symbolize in an external form those principles which have become for us 
the highest ideals that we believe are worthy of our direction and aspirations. To profane a sacred object or a sacred place is to belittle a sacred idea, is to be a traitor to our own inner selves. We can do no harm to any external object insofar as its effect throughout eternity is concerned. But to fail to respect the ideals which are exemplified in this external form and which we have assigned there ourselves is to be inconsistent with our own ideals and our own aims and aspirations. None of us would want to see an object which is held sacred by an individual in any way profaned or made to appear cheap or not worthy of what it represents to another person. But even more serious are the consequences to the mind and the experience of the individual who performs such an act because he depletes himself of the ideals which have been represented externally. In order to understand the concept of sacredness, we must remember that we ourselves create what is sacred to us. And in doing so, we realize that every man Every woman does the same thing. Therefore, in the process of evolvement, in the process of setting up our own sacred landmarks, we are living in an environment with other intelligent entities who also establish their own ideals of what is sacred. Consequently, within the concept of sacredness comes the concept of tolerance and goodwill, so that more important than recognizing the inviolate sacredness of other objects merely because they represent a series of ideas established by a creed, cult, doctrine, or philosophy. It is more important that we recognize the right of everyone to build his own sacred ideas, and that we, with tolerance, recognize the right to maintain them. As we wish to have respected our ideas, so we must respect others, and if this concept could be practiced continually, then tolerance and peace would be the lot of all men.